In my last video, I showed you guys how to create a card jitsu cheat for Club Penguin, or more specifically for CBPS.io. In this video, we'll be looking at how that cheat could be updated to work on the much more popular new Club Penguin, which uses encrypted communication. Okay, so first let me show you what we're up against exactly. I have the new Club Penguin client open here, and I'm gonna log in. Or first I'm gonna start listening on Wireshark. I'm going to log in and connect to a server. So we're in a server, and uh, a lot of these packets are things we don't need. I'm going to go ahead and filter for the correct ones from the new Club Penguin server. And here we go. Now it's a bit quieter. And you may already notice that these packets look very different from the ones we had in the last video from cbps.io. Here we have some base64 encoded ciphertext. Whereas in the last video, we were seeing the raw, unencrypted Club Penguin protocol being sent over the internet. As it is right now, we really have no idea what's being sent, so this is something we need to deal with in this video. Club Penguin is a Flash game, and when we launch it on our computer, we're really just launching a modified browser with Flash support built in. The actual game files are then downloaded from the new Club Penguin servers. We could take a closer look at these files using Burp Suit. So, we're going to go ahead and launch Burp Suit, and then we're going to set the system proxy settings to route all traffic through Burp Suit, or HTTP traffic at least. We can do that like this. Uh, Burp Suit listens on port 8080 by default, so I have that set up already, and we'll click Save. Uh, with that being ready, we can launch the new Club Penguin client. We're going to start seeing a lot of packets being intercepted by burp suit, but we'll click through until we see one called version.txt, which the new Club Penguin client is going to request. Here we go. Version.txt, requested from media1.newcp.net. To avoid having to re-download the game files each time we launch the client, Nucla Penguin uses this file version.txt to check if our locally cached versions match the server versions, and will only download them if they don't. In this case, we want to re-download all the files because we want to see what there is, so we're going to hit intercept response and forward the packet. Once we see the response, uh, we're going to have to click through a bit. Okay, so here's the response for version.txt. Right now, these are the versions we have downloaded. So that we re-download everything, I'm just going to randomly modify these numbers so that our client thinks we're out of date and will request all the game files to be re-downloaded. So I'll send that, and we'll start seeing these SWFs being downloaded. To get rid of these other packets, which I don't really care about, I'm going to set a, a uh, scope for https.media1.newcp.net. So we're only going to see the requests for new CP. And then in proxy options, you need to do and is in target scope, and we'll disable WebSockets. And we should stop seeing all these other things. So. Notifications.swf font library. Banning. We're going to click through until we see cipher.swf, which sounds interesting. Or I, I already know it exists, but the first time I was doing this, I was just clicking through, seeing what there was. And so we see we're requesting a file named cipher.swf. And given that we're dealing with ciphertext, this sounds very interesting. Perhaps this is a file which is encrypting the communication, right? So, I'm going to go ahead and download this one. We know the exact URL we can download it from. Here, https media1.newcp.net. Okay, so cipher.swf. Uh, I already have it downloaded. So we download cipher.swf. Let's take a closer look at that. So we just downloaded cipher.swf from the game servers. Uh, we don't really know what it does, but luckily for us, flash files decompile very nicely. I'll be using JPEX for this purpose, which is an open source flash decompiler you can get for free on GitHub. 
So we're going to go ahead and open it up. Cypher.swf. And looking under scripts, frame one, do action, we see the real juicy internals of this file. We see some functions handling login and world connections. We see references to uh, encryption, decryption, AES, NACL, which is the networking and cryptography library. And we see some functions for sending and receiving unencrypted data, or alternatively, encrypted data. So this is exactly what we were looking for, right? We were looking for the library which was responsible for encrypting the packets being sent. And this is it. Um, another thing that we see is this function called log, which seems to call console.log. We're not able to see the output of this log function though. Like, we can't just hit F12 in the Club Penguin app and receive the console like you would be able to in a typical browser. The good news, however, is that reading this console output is not very hard. There is a development branch of the new Club Penguin client available on GitHub that we can download and use to see these log messages. Uh, it's this one. Let me show you real quick. This one. So we have the development branch that anyone can download. We're going to go ahead and clone it. Git clone. So we're going to clone this repository so that we can launch the client locally. Once that's done, we can enter the directory and we're going to want to use yarn to install the dependencies. If you don't already have yarn and if you don't have Node.js installed, then these are two things you have to do first as new Club Penguin app is an Electron app which uses Node.js, right? So we're installing these dependencies. I'll let it run for a minute. Okay, so Yarn finished downloading everything, and at this point we have a built client that we can use. We need to do one more thing before we start. We need to set a special environment variable so that Electron will give us the output from console.log. So it's set Electron enable logging equals one, and we'll use Yarn start to start this client up. We should see the familiar client launching, however, this time we'll also be seeing some interesting logs in the console. So, we'll go ahead and log in real quick. Okay, so we're already seeing some in interesting log messages. So, send unencrypt data, send unencrypt data, receive unencrypt data, enc key. These are all strings which we might recognize from cipher.swf. The enc key in this case is the AES encryption key that is being used to encrypt these packets being sent that I showed you in the Wireshark section. So this is good news. We're seeing the output from console.log being called in cipher.swf. We know we're doing something correctly, right? So first, let me explain a little better how the client and server are communicating. So in cipher.swf, when we start up our client, we use NACL, the networking and cryptography library to generate an asymmetric key pair, AKA a public and private key. So we're using generate key, we have the public and the private, right? We send this public key to the server in a packet which looks like this. So this is a packet we send to the server. This is our public key which we just generated with NACL. The server then sends us this packet, second layer encryption, and then this ciphertext, right? The ciphertext is the AES key, so this one but it's encrypted with our public key that we have the private key for, or the client has the private key for. This is sent to us, we decrypt it with the private key, we have the AES key that the server also has, and then the rest of the communication is encrypted with AES, which is a symmetric cipher. So in order for our cheat to work, we need to be able to decrypt the traffic, and to do this, we need to figure out what the AES key is. I mean, we could just read it from the console output, but there are better ways, right? Unfortunately, the public and private key pair is newly generated each time the client runs, and figuring out what they are is not straightforward. Luckily, however, there is a very easy workaround to this, and it is straight up 
hard coding a known key pair into cipher.swf. Apparently the server doesn't check if the swf files we're running on the client side are legit, so we can just modify the files as we wish, and this way when the server sends us the encrypted AES key, it's encrypted with our known public key, which we can sniff this traffic and decrypt it with the private key, which we know, and then we'll have the AES key, which we can use to sniff and decrypt the rest of the traffic. Here we have cipher.swf open. We'll hit edit action script. And instead of using generate key, we're going to hard code two values here. I already have a pair prepared. This is the public key and this is the private key. We'll go ahead and save that and we're going to save as swf. So cipher mod.swf, the modified cipher, right? We'll go ahead and save that. We're gonna go ahead and do one more step. Uh, there's probably a better way to do this, but we want the file to be just base64 text. We can use this website. And so we have cipher.swf as base64. I have this file called sniffer.py which has the public and private key, and it listens for the encryption packet, which contains the encrypted AES key. It sniffs, sniffs, it sees this encryption packet, it receives it and decrypts it using the private key from our key pair, and then uses it to sniff the rest of the traffic and AES decrypt it, right? So we can go ahead and start this. Python sniffer. We need to start burp again because we need to modify cipher.swf as it's coming in. Start that and we can start the client. So all we want to do is we want to up we want to change the versions.txt so it starts redownloading everything and when it tries to download cipher.swf we're going to use our modified version instead of the one that the server sends. So here we are changing the version numbers. Forward that. And now let's just click through until we see cipher.swf. Okay, cipher.swf. We're going to intercept the response. And we see the raw cipher.swf. We converted our modified one to base64. We'll paste it in. We'll decode it from base64. So we have the raw modified cipher.swf, which we can forward, and we don't care about the rest. So we're gonna go ahead, continue to log in, and we're gonna see some interesting messages here. We see that we received the second layer packet, and we decrypted the AES key with our private key. And this is already an unencrypted Club Penguin protocol packet. We'll go ahead and join a server. And here we go. Now we're dealing with the unencrypted Club Penguin packets that we recognized from the last video. So getting the cheat to work from this point is really not that difficult. Here I am playing against not BMDYY, who is definitely not just me on my laptop. And I have the modified cheat jutsu running here. We can see we decrypted the AES key and uh, this is output from a previous round, but here we are in the current game. We can see my cards, we can see the enemy cards. He picks a snow, I pick a fire, and there you go. I will not be releasing the source code for the modified cheat that I'm running right now, as New Club Penguin is the most popular Club Penguin remake at the moment. That being said, I've shown you in this video that if you understand a little bit of programming, it's really very easy to get working. In any case, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. If you haven't already seen part one, you can check it out here somewhere. And apart from that, I'll catch you guys next time.